Okay, same chapter, electric field. Now we have two plates which are held parallel and horizontal, parallel to each other and horizontal to the ground. Suppose one plate is connected with a positive and the other plate connected with a negative. So the electric field between two plates is uniform and it is directed from positive to negative, equally spaced. Now, oil drop, which is negatively charged, suppose is placed exactly between the two plate. With some adjustment of the potential difference, this oil drop can be made stationary between the two plates because weight is acting down and the electric force acting up with the adjustment of the electric field strength, we can make force electric equal to the weight, equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So the sum of the two forces, this F up, Y axis positive up, minus weight down, the resultant force is zero. So this oil drop, charge oil drop, can be made stationary. It mean F must be equal to weight in magnitude and opposite in direction. So when this oil drop is stationary between the two fields, then the plates must be parallel to each other to provide the uniform electric field and must be horizontal to the ground to produce the force exactly opposite to the weight. And number three, the charge of the oil drop must be opposite to the polarity of top plate. Look, the top plate is positively charged. So oil drop must be negatively charged. And number four, the resultant force of F and W must be zero. Then the oil drop charge, oil drop is stationary. So these are the four conditions. Parallel plates, horizontal plates, opposite charge on the oil drop to the polarity of the top plate and the resultant force zero. Now, Electric force is acting up, weight is acting down. Electric force F is equal to EQ and the charge mass is charge oil drop mass is mg, W is equal to mg. So from this, we can calculate charge to mass ratio, which is the ratio between gravitational field strength which is small g over the electric field strength. So the ratio between gravitational and electric field strength is the charge to mass ratio of the oil drop. Now the charge of the oil drop can be calculated by using the formula mg over e where M is the mass of the oil drop, G is, is acceleration due to gravity or gravitational field strength mean 9.81, and E is the electric field strength between the two plate, which can be determined by the potential difference between the two plate and the separation between the two plates. Okay, if by mistake, two plates are parallel but not horizontal. So this is the top plate which is connected with the positive. This is the bottom plate connected negative. Yes, due to parallel position, electric field is uniform. To 
field lines are directed from positive to negative equally spaced when the oil drop is placed here negatively charged due to non horizontal plates the force is acting in this direction this is the electric force because the electric force is always parallel to the electric field lines but the weight is acting down towards the center of the planet so the weight is making some angle theta and this angle theta is exactly equal to this angle theta so the line adjacent to the angle is the x component so this is the x component and here is the weight y component so in this situation the electric force is balancing not the whole weight only the x component of the weight so the wy component becomes unbalanced which produces acceleration in the object down the in this direction hence when the plates are non horizontal position in the non horizontal position we cannot make this oil drop stationary because one component of the weight becomes unbalanced which falls it down okay now suppose we have two metal plates both are parallel and horizontal and the length is l unit both metal plates of same length l centimeter l meter one plate suppose connected with the positive terminal and other connected suppose with the negative terminal so there is uniform electric field between the two plates and this uniform electric field strength e can be determined by the potential difference between two plates divided by separation between the two plates so potential difference this and the separation between two plates mean the gap between two plates now suppose a charge particle is traveling horizontally in this direction with velocity vx horizontal velocity vx it is suppose positively charged and mass is m when this charge particles enter the electric field according to the formula f is equal to e q force is experienced by this particle look this is positive the positive will repel negative will attract so the direction of the force this vertically down this is the electric force experienced by the charge particle so due to this vertical force it will deviate from its expected horizontal path so it will bend down and will make some parabolic path inside the field downward so initially its vertical speed is zero because it was traveling horizontally and of this force is vertical so it will produce the vertical acceleration so the vertical acceleration produced in the moving charge particle will be f divided by m mean e q over m so due to this vertical force vertical acceleration is produced so it will gain some vertical velocity and before leaving the electric field at the point p its final vertical velocity v y will be u plus a t now initial vertical velocity is zero because it was traveling horizontally 
So Vy is equal to AT. Now we have the knowledge of vertical acceleration, but this time is not there. So we will find this time when it enters the electric field from the point A to point P, the horizontal distance covered by the charge particle is exactly equal to the length of the each plate. So this is the horizontal distance. So it is must be covered with the horizontal velocity into time t. So the time will be equal to length of the plate divided by horizontal velocity. So v y the vertical velocity over here will be acceleration vertical multiply by time which is the horizontal distance divided by horizontal velocity so in this motion this parabolic motion the horizontal velocity will remain same because of no horizontal force is acting. Vertical velocity is changing due to the weight. So the vertical velocity gained is Vy. Now, after leaving the electric field, it goes straight undeviated. So this is the resultant velocity after escaping from the field. Now this resultant velocity can be calculated by Vx square, Vy square under root, horizontal component, vertical component square under root. This is the resultant velocity. Now, if this particle goes straight from A to D, then the horizontal distance covered is length of the plate, but due to electric field, it has to cover the vertical distance as well, which is the distance between B and P. If the question is how much vertically, right? This charge particles cover distance down. So we will use the equation S is equal to ut 1 by 2 at square s is the vertical distance covered between b and p so the initial vertical speed is zero so 1 by 2 the vertical acceleration we have given here eq over m and the time taken will remain same, which is L divided by Vx whole square. So the vertical distance BP will be equal to one by two EQ L square over M horizontal velocity square. So this is the vertical distance covered by the object, by this moving charge particle. Now, the question is, what is the deviation? What is the deviation of the moving charge particle from its actual path, this theta? So for this, we will assume the line AP straight. So it becomes a triangle. This is the A point when it enters. This is the P point straight, but it leaves the electric field at the point B. So just taking this triangle, this distance covered is SB. This is the length of the plate. So this angle theta can be determined, angle of deviation by perpendicular over base tan theta. So tan theta is equal to the vertical distance covered, this BP vertical distance divided by length of the plate. Hence the angular deviation means the angle deviated tan inverse vertical distance divided by horizontal distance. Okay, suppose the distance of the point A at which it enters the electric field from the bottom plate is represented by suppose N. And this point is suppose X. So the distance AX is N. If this N distance is compared with this S distance BP, 
So this is the distance of the moving charge particle from the bottom plate. And this is the distance covered vertically. If the distance vertical BP is smaller than the end distance, it means the charged particle will escape the electric field. Look, if this distance covered is smaller than this distance, mean like this, this is smaller, this is smaller, then it escapes the electric field. But if this calculated distance vertical SBP becomes greater than N, it means it will hit the bottom plate and it will not escape the field. Suppose if this distance N is five centimeter and the distance covered by this BP is coming seven centimeter. So it means this distance covered is larger. It bends more, so it hits the plate. So whether it escapes the field or it will hit the plate can be determined by comparing the vertical distance covered with the distance when it enters the electric field from the bottom plate. So if this distance vertical is smaller than the N, then it escapes the electric field, or if it's greater than the plate, uh, greater than the N, then it will hit the plate.